The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. It's Friday evening here in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, as it is in most of the world, but in other parts of the world, it is now Saturday. My name is Rob McConnell, and welcome back to the X-Zone. And the X-Zone, as you know, is a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And if you'd like to find out more about the X-Zone, visit TV. Dot com for all the programming available on the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. There is 24-7, 365 programming with our compliments. And to find out what's playing on the Exxon TV channel that is exclusive to Simul TV, visit www.simultv.com. Exxon Nation, my guest this hour in this edition of the Exxon is David Lowry. Uh, the paranormal highwayman, as he's known, he's he's a loner, believe it or not, uh, preferring to meet ghosts head on, experimenting with ways of strengthening them and seeking out places that they hide. David, as I said, is known as the paranormal highwayman, has developed a lifelong interest in the paranormal into a passion that takes him to the four corners of our great country and beyond, forever seeking the holy grail of paranormal researchers indisputable proof of existence, his methods and equipment are cutting edge in a rapidly changing field of research and investigation. Joining me now from the state of Illinois is David H. Lowry, a.k.a. the Paranormal Highwayman. And David, welcome to the Exxon. Thank you very much, sir. Very happy to be here. Well, it's super to have you. Uh, Tell us about how you got started investigating the paranormal, David. Wow, it's been kind of a lifelong thing for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, I tell people that when I first learned to read in elementary school, one of the first books I picked up was called An Incident at Exeter. And uh, it was about a uh, UFO incident that happened in Exeter, Pennsylvania, a UFO following uh, power lines and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And that kind of got me hooked on UFOs. So I was into UFOs pretty heavily as, as a young child. Uh, my teenage years, I kind of drifted over to cryptids, uh, fascinated with Bigfoot, and um, uh, uh, when I started hunting as, as a young man, uh, I would kind of combine that with looking for footprints and signs and hoping that someday I would maybe come across a Bigfoot, and uh, that's kind of an interesting story there. I'll, I'll tell you about that one later. I, I crossed over to ghosts pretty quick at about 18 when I was touched by a very famous ghost uh, in a local um, a defunct nightclub uh, called the Lake Club, which uh, actually has been on America's uh, scariest places and that sort of thing. A very famous uh, suicide ghost there who uh, uh, kind of messed with me one night, and that kind of turned me over to ghosts. And I've uh, been kind of following ghosts ever since. Wow. So, um, yeah, it's uh, kind of been an ongoing thing with me. <laughs> it certainly sounds it. Uh, over the years, David, what has been your most... Uh, pivoting experience. What has been your most amazing find when it comes to the investigation, investigating that you do in the paranormal? You know, surprisingly enough, it comes just um, 
just uh, a couple years back here. Mm -hmm. I spent two years as the uh, caretaker and investigation host of Ashmore Estates here in Illinois. Uh, Ashmore was a a former poor farm and then um, became a mental hospital and then a home for the developmentally disabled and uh, has uh, a long history of uh, it's considered in, on a lot of lists, one of the top ten most haunted places in America, wow. and um, I we have a little ghost there. Her name is Elva Skinner. Uh, Elva died in the orig- in, on the location in the original poor farm. Uh, she uh, went upstairs one night to get get uh, uh, dressed in her or one morning to get dressed in her dress caught on fire from a candle, and mm. she burned to death. And the first poor farm was destroyed. But um, I like to I tell people that she was. Uh, the ghost that was never told she was supposed to be quiet. We get a lot of EVPs and things from her. And um, me living on the premises and being in the place 24-7 like that, we had very close. So she would, I would invite her to come with me on a tour and, and hold my hand, and I would get two little cold fingers. And, uh, um, you know, I've had uh, gifted psychics tell me that she calls me Papa and, and things like that. We became, we can get close to a ghost. It was certainly hmm. that way. So that's probably one of the most amazing things I've had. Let, let me ask you, uh, with this uh, little ghost, uh, did she ever appear to you as a full-blown apparition? No, she hasn't. No, I... She seems shy like that. I don't think anybody really has ever seen her, but we certainly get a lot of EVPs and, mm-hmm. and things that seem to confirm who she is. She loves to talk about her. Um, apparently, she had a dog there at the poor farm, which was kind of rare for back in those days. But um, she would say, have you seen my puppy? Uh-huh. And uh, I have a dog here. And a lot of EVPs like that are very clear. How old was she when she passed, David? She was four, almost five. Oh, God five. bless her. Um, yeah, uh, one of the best EVPs that uh, had a, a good friend caught while recording my tour of the building. And um, you hear me say my name, and it, she, she's a typical four-year-old standing next to me. She just kind of says, I have a dog here, and it's just <laughs> as clear as day. <laughs> I said, it's just a four-year-old wants the crowd's attention, you know, it's just very typical. But but the crowd but the crowd can't hear her right only on the EVPs right yeah right right yeah it was only on recording yeah why do you why do you think she has stayed behind and hasn't gone to the light or wherever people or children go once they pass yeah my opinion with children is a lot of times if they pass quickly like that mm-hmm. um, they we get so many people get. Uh, uh, I want my mommy. Have you seen my mommy? Have you yeah. seen my mom and dad? That sort of thing. I think they're just lost. I don't think they really know what they're supposed to do. And uh, I think they end up staying that way. And um, uh, it, um, it it's heartbreaking, but, but I believe that's, I think, a lot of it is the cause. Well, as the caretaker of the estate, had you ever tried to help her find her mom and dad on the other side? I have uh, I have tried a couple of times to talk to her about going into light and that mm-hmm. sort of thing, and and uh, I'm certainly not trained in that area, um, but um, you did your some best. People are, but I yeah I did my best. Excellent. Absolutely. How uh, many other apps? Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, she just seems I hate to say it, but happy there. She just always uh, always seems to have a good attitude. Well, a happy child is a happy child, isn't it? No matter where they are, this hey. side or the other side. Exactly. Exactly. How many other spirits or entities are there in the estate? Oh, I, it's um, there are many. I would say you know there are. Uh, um, I don't know if we've ever had a total, but I would say there are mm. probably forty or fifty that wow. we've had various contact names that come up and things like that. It uh, it had um, uh, had a lot of history, especially as as a mental hospital. Um, you know, it was the third floor was reserved for the worst of patients, and that uh, that area can be extremely active. And um, I used to tell people coming in that that I believe that that spirits are the same basic same basic people as they were in life. They're mm-hmm. just they've just passed on to another another place, and a lot of them retain their same personality traits. A lot of them were kind of mean. A lot of them, you know, jokesters and. Sure. and uh, uh, get a various various types of people that you would think in a in certainly a mental hospital. David, what kind of activity is there on the third floor? 
Um, a lot of BVPs, um, a lot of um, disembodied voices. You'll hear conversations. Um, a lot, even even noises such as the old metal bedpans clanking. I hated mm. that one. I would hear that occasionally, and uh, it's kind of reminds you of every time you're in the hospital with your parents or something. And it's, <laughs> it's such a such a noise you remember. And um, uh, shadow figures, a lot of shadow figures. Um, yeah, I had always wondered about shadow figures, what mm-hmm. kind of spirits they were, and you know, there's a big controversy about about really what they are. Sure, and um, I, uh, one night I was the, the, looked down the third floor hallway, there was a security light outside. So the big window at the end kind of lights the whole hallway. Mm-hmm. And as I was watching a shadow figure went across the hallway, dragging a leg, oh, like boy. it had an injured leg. And most people think shadow figures are something different. I mean, that mm-hmm. kind of proved to me that they're just, they're just regular spirits and just happen to have, uh, you know, have a little different form or a certain time of energy or something have a little different form because um if they were something different you would think they would be perfect and not not have an injured leg so all right david stand by my friend you and i have to take our first break explanation david lowry is our very special guest this hour he's also known as the paranormal highwayman and uh, his website is Oh, let me see. Paranormalhighway.com. That's www.paranormalhighway.com. And uh, David and I will be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. My name is Rob McConnell. Don't go away. skeptic or a believer join me rob mcconnell as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the exxon radio tv show on xzbn and the exxon tv channel on simul tv since 1990 the exxon radio tv show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard together we'll investigate ufos aliens ghosts bigfoot psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV. Plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand worldwide and more does this sound like tomorrow's television well it is but you can have it today right now it is simul tv simul tv offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like exxon sci-fi and horror we are worldwide no other provider offers that 500 built-in video games no need to have an extra expensive system we have them included free video on demand live streaming events from around the world 
interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. So Nation, David H. Lowry is our special guest, and his website is ParanormalHighway.com. And, uh, David, where did the nickname we're also known as the Paranormal Highwaymen come from? It um, kind of started, let's say, about uh, oh, about 12 years ago now, actually. Um, I lost my father, who was a uh, an Illinois deep coal miner and suffered through that life, you know, for 25 oh, years. Yeah. Come out, come out of the, um, come out of the mine healthy. Uh, didn't have a stitch of black lung, which amazed his, uh, his doctor. That's very common, of course, breathing coal yes. dust. Yeah. And, um, he had an aortic aneurysm that took him after four years of retirement and oh, he really gosh. didn't get to do all that he planned. And so I, Kind of uh, later in life, after my divorce and things, I said, you know, I'm just not going to go down that way. I want to do what I want to do. I want to explore the paranormal, and I want to hit the road and, and kind of see America and, and find the paranormal there. And that's when I kind of formulated this plan to start traveling the highways of America and uh, um, and it's... see what I could find just by talking to local people, urban legends, and right. that sort of thing. And uh, one of the first plans was Route 66, and that, oh, one, yeah. that one's coming up. Uh, a long story there in, in getting to that one. I'd be happy to tell you, but uh, yeah, it's um, that's kind of the whole the whole basis of it. And friends started, and when I started talking, like I had friends who were like, "Oh, you're just going to be a highwayman." Oh, and it kind of stuck. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's very appropriate. It it's very appropriate, you know, considering what your plans yeah. are and what you've done so far. In in your opinion, yeah. where is the most haunted or the most paranormal place that you have been to date? Oh, I think um, probably, um, I think Alton, Illinois mm -hmm. is one of the most haunted places that I certainly have ever experienced. Uh, not too far from me here, about, about 100 miles south. Um, Alton, a lot of us believe that the whole town is kind of haunted because... It had a very, very rough prison there oh. yeah, early in history, and uh, a lot of death and a lot of violence and things. And when that prison was torn down, the various limestone rocks that were used in the prison walls and things were distributed about the town. And a lot of them are used in foundations and uh, different walls and things like that of of homes and businesses in the town, and it just seems to have spread that uh, spread that energy out. And uh, there are so many places down there that have so much activity. So, and a lot of them seem to be connected with that with that rock. So, tell me, David, based on your experience and the research that you've done over the years, what is a ghost? Is a ghost the soul of a person? Is it the magnetic imprint on the magnetic field uh, that surrounds the planet? In your opinion, sir, what is a ghost? Well, we're taught uh, pretty much from the beginning of school that energy can be ne neither created or destroyed. Mm -hmm. And we have a certain amount of energy in our body. And um, be it a personality, a soul, uh, whatever you would like to call it, when we die, when the physical body dies, mm -hmm. that energy basically has to go somewhere. And um, I think it is released. Um if they're, you know, getting into the religious aspects, if there is some place where it goes, sometimes people don't. And uh, uh, maybe that's our conscience trying to tell mm -hmm. us where to go afterwards. Um, we have, uh, I've always expressed the theory that if you have led a bad life, uh, a rough life, or committed suicide, we've always been taught that that um, you will not go on to heaven uh, because you've, you've done these things. And I think that fear of being judged once you get to heaven keeps a lot of spirits from moving on to wherever it is that a spirit should go. And um, 
Uh, that's kind of my, my, my take on it. I think a lot of them, especially suicide victims, were told you can't get into heaven if you commit suicide. And so they, you know, they're very prevalent out there. But any time you, you have a hanging or, or a violent suicide of some kind, you're going to mm-hmm. have a ghost. But let me ask so, you this, then. Spirit. Let me ask you this. If it's only those who mm-hmm. have led violent lives or, you, you know, to, to coin an old phrase, you know, you, you, sow what you, you reap what you sow and so on and so forth. What about that four-year-old yeah. little girl who holds your hand? How come she didn't go over? How come she's a ghost? Exactly. I think that's the again the confusion mm-hmm. that uh, that she doesn't uh, she doesn't know quite what she's supposed to do because her mother and father of course weren't there, and um, we see it a lot of times with family members uh, maybe don't want to go they don't want to leave watching over their family members or it's very common to have like the builder of a home right. who struggled and gave and and just does not want to leave this mm-hmm. place because he put so much into it you know so i think there are various reasons for them to them to stay whether some are conscious or not so. but help help me try to understand the the concept of the energy leaving the physical body when we pass I can I can see the energy leaving, but how does the energy retain the the wherewithal so that it is cognizant of the person's life who it just left, and why doesn't it just go wherever energy or matter goes? <laughs> that is the question for the monk on top of the mountain. I, I really I really don't don't really have mm. a clue there. That's why we talk about. Uh, the paranormal, there are there is no expert in the paranormal because there's so many open-ended questions that we just can't answer. You know, nobody really knows, and um, so that kind of leaves it open to sure. opinion. And, but uh, that's why the paranormal is kind of so all-encompassing because anybody's opinion is valid because we just don't know. So. Then, then what is the sense or uh, of of investigating the paranormal if? We, up until this time, we have no idea what we're investigating. How can anyone investigate anything with any certainty if we don't know what it is? Yeah, that's that's it entirely, and that's something we wrestle with mm. every day. Um, you know, uh, the paranormal science, as a science, we can't really call it paranormal science, paranormal theory. Um, it's going to have to go through... As any kind of discipline in science does when it's it's something unknown, it's going to have to go through a growth period where people are going to have to um, investigate and come up with theories, and then we're going to have to develop uh, um, methods mm-hmm. of investigation that can be correlated so that so that uh, you know these different hypotheses can be can be uh, made and papers published, and you know someday maybe it will become a real science. But right now. You know, it's difficult. There's so many things. We're having a lot of people talk about quantum physics and things like that, how that may figure into it now. But uh, I think different there, dimensions. Mm-hmm. There are a bunch of opinions. I, I think that these are all opinions with uh, with with a lot of people who really don't know what the hell they're talking about in plain English. Uh, uh, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. What about I'd all the what about all these groups? What about all these groups that are out there that use all this? This technology that they buy online, is any of this of any asset in really doing a paranormal investigation? Or is this just little gizmos that somebody's found a way how to make a couple of bucks on? Well, you know, they really do show some amazing things, Mm -hmm. certainly. Um, uh, Especially in anything dealing with electromagnetic nature. We we have adapted equipment from from basically from electricians that measure electromagnetic energy from various items. And we have found that when there is a spirit near, um, uh, the electromagnetic equipment will read that. Um, I have a good friend who is actually has a degree in mm-hmm. parapsychology. From, Who's that? From a university. Who's that? Uh, his name is Tim Hart. Tim Hart. He I, would be a good guest for you sometime. I, a, I didn't know that. Project, uh, I didn't know there were any universities that gave accredited courses in parapsychology. There there are a few small ones, yeah. You're not going to find – there was one given out in the 70s, I think, by Kent State, mm-hmm. and then the program was eliminated. You wow. know, The big universities aren't tackling it yet, but uh, some of the smaller private institutions and things, there are, right. uh, uh, they are starting to. 
And uh, he has a unit called uh, MESA, M-E-S-A. I think it's multi who something sensor array is the last part of it though. And he measures so many different things during, during uh, a paranormal event, uh, ion, mm -hmm. static electricity, humidity, temperature. And, uh, you know, that's where we're going to have to go to turn this in anything. We're going to have to have some way to correlate that something is happening. Is it, is it uh, possible? Is uh, it possible, David, that the investigation or the equipment that is needed to investigate the phenomena is being, based on the current knowledge of science and physics as we know today, instead of looking outside of the box and trying to figure out what if it is this or what if it is that. Yes, yes, absolutely. I always look to um, Nikola Tesla, mm -hmm. who is a figure in history, a uh, very advanced scientist uh, back in the days of Edison and that sort of thing. A lot of people know of him. Yeah. Um, he he was one who thought out of the box. Yeah. And there are certainly things that we still look back on to him for, uh, you know, for guidance in, in what we're doing. Um, uh, his talk of, uh, you know, energy and vibration and frequency, you know, keys to the universe. And uh, I think that's what it could be all about because we're seeing uh, it's strange, like the voices I talk Talk about EVP voices, which. Whoops! I'm sorry about that. That's my producer telling me I've got to get to my next, uh, my next segment. So okay, please stand by. David Lowry is our special guest this hour. His website is www.paranormalhighway.com. That's www.paranormalhighway.com. And David and I will be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the X Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario. Canada on the iHeart Radio Network, on the Mutual Broadcast Network, Talkstar Radio Network, Exxon Broadcast Network, Simul Radio, and Simul TV. I'm Rob McConnell. Don't go away. Broadcast studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, to the world and beyond. You're watching the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. AVS Media Day. You have heard of the Exxon? Now watch it on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world, interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today, Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnick's author of a fascinating book, Amen. 
It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the Word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God. It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Explanation, David Lowry is our special guest. www.paranormalhighway.com is his website. And uh, David, I understand that you Rhett, would you prefer to work in these investigations alone. Why is that? I do. It's um, I have uh, spent time with uh, a lot of time with teams. Mm-hmm. Um, my sister in law actually started one of the largest and oldest uh, uh, groups here in Central Illinois, the Springfield Ghost Society, and I've I've worked with them in the past. And but um, I, paranormal teams can be, you know, they're. I guess it's I'm a little more serious about it than than most maybe, and and some of the teams right. they tend to make a little too much noise. They tend to contaminate things. You know, uh, um, we try and teach them not to whisper uh, on an investigation because then somebody may record it and think that it's a, a spirit voice. And um, I, I just, uh, I just, and plus I like to use uh, the fight or flight um, uh, part of my, my psyche to, to kind of tell what's going on around me. Certainly, you know, you're, when a spirit is near, you'll get, you get a chill, you'll get the hair standing up on your body, you know, you'll get a cold, uh, mm-hmm. a cold draft or something like that. So if you're by yourself, you're able to pick up on that sort of thing a lot more. So, um, uh, fear is, uh, fear is a part of it. They say, don't you get scared by yourself? I say, well, yeah, <laughs> you know, absolutely. But, but, uh, I just have to remember that, that, um, most of them are not capable of doing a whole lot of you. They just want to communicate. So mm. you find ways to talk to them. So, um, you know, there are the bad ones out there. We see on TV a lot of the paranormal shows and things. We see a lot of talk of demons. I've been almost a little over 30 years at this, and I've never met a demon. I've met some seriously bad ghosts. I, yeah. I call them badhead ghosties. That's what my daughter used to call them. You know, these are these are just really bad people, and they like being really bad to, to the living after they're done, too. So... Uh, I've had to deal with quite a few of those, but um, the demons, when I always try to assure people, they're very, very, very rare. And um, uh, luckily, knock on wood, I've never had to deal with one yet that I know of. I, You know, I've been talking to people who work in the paranormal one aspect or another for 29 years now. and mm-hmm. And it seems that paranormal investigators, for the most part, are using the paranormal as a social uh, network where they don't seem to fit in anywhere else in society. They found their <laughs> niche in the paranormal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that's very, uh, I think it's uh, a very good observation. And, um, and a lot of us, mm-hmm. a lot of us have certain things about us that uh, don't, quite fit in um a lot of us have some kind of psychic gift some right. kind of ability to do things with our minds um yeah, i'm an empath uh, which is is pretty common amongst us uh, that's someone who can sense emotions uh, on someone else and is affected by uh, certainly the living and uh i think that makes us a little more sensitive to the dead too so uh, it, earlier, once again, and I, I keep going back to this this um, this vision of somebody passing and the energy leaving their body. Okay, so now you've mm-hmm. got this this energy that was contained 
by a human body that is now free, or let's call it the essence or the soul. Okay, the soul yeah. is now free. And you were, just, you were saying before they want to communicate. How do they communicate if they're just energy? It doesn't make you know, sense. I, I'm, yeah, really. Um, our, certainly our surroundings and things have a lot of uh, the ability to conduct things. Um, by that, I say things – we find things like moving water, uh, limestone, quartz – um, you know that that we normally associate with with energy mm-hmm. uh, kind of seem to conduct that uh, yeah. limestone is, is very if you have something built on limestone a house on limestone chances are it's going to have things in it that kind of goes back to another another long time theory about the paranormal called the stone stone recording theory and that's where you know spirit energy emotions um at bars, this is very common in bars and nightclubs where there's so much emotion, as so much energy expressed, it's recorded in the material around it. And um, oftentimes that will play back. We oh, call okay. That but, all right. Now, hold on. Here. Okay, let's, let's, just, let's mm-hmm. just stop it here for a second so I don't get too confused. I, sure. <laughs> all right. It, okay, when you're talking about a bar, the, 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 um, the ambience that is there from different people drinking alcohol, having a good time, and you know, or whatever the case is, it's a meeting place. How does that get recorded into wood? How does that get recorded into glass? How does that get recorded into brass? I, I'm having a problem with this. Yeah, we know. Um... A lot, I guess it has a lot to do with the cellular, cellular structure of things. Uh, quartz is probably the most prime example. Sure. We, uh, we know that scientists have told us that quartz can record computer memory. Um, so if that is if that is true, then there may be some correlation here. Limestone, again, is very similar in construction and uh, able to do that sort of thing. Um, but you don't. So, you usually don't find limestone in a bar. No, not usually, not usually, yeah. unless it's unless it's underneath it. But so there has to be other things in there that are capable of this. Okay. How, uh, uh, you know, we don't know. But um, uh, certainly, I would think um, copper pipes and that's anything that may conduct energy might be able to store something like that. And uh, again, it's one of those unknowns. These are mm-hmm. just kind of theories that Seriously. we're working with, you know, and exploring. Tell me about Blackbird. Um, Blackbird is a 1976 Avco um, 30-foot Class A motorhome, mm-hmm. um, full fiberglass. I spent many, many years uh, restoring Corvettes, so I learned fiberglass quite well. Oh, cool. And um, I, I decided um, about um, 10 years ago that mm-hmm. this, this trip was going to happen, this, this highwayman thing was going to happen. And I, I had a dream one night that I was walking down a highway and I got really tired, and I sat down under an old tree, and I woke up, and the tree was full of crows and blackbirds and ravens and things, and they picked me up and carried me off down the road. And so that's where the term blackbird come from. So blackbird was named before I actually bought the motorhome. And blackbird, um, I started converting into a paranormal laboratory. It has a, a very extreme sound system, five computer systems, um, external infrared lighting and cameras and everything like that so it is basically just outfitted to be my home away from home and uh, a place where i can do my paranormal work and uh, i actually started that like i said about 10 years ago Mm -hmm. Uh, then we in in, uh, 2011 i had a simultaneous brainstem stroke and heart attack oh jesus uh, Came very close to dying. Uh, actually had a kind of an out of body experience uh, right before. Not really into a true near death, but I was close. I was circling the room and heard the doctor say, "Oh my God, this man's having a stroke too." And um, I recovered from that. The nurses call me the miracle man. I recovered from it well. And then we found, and so I'm trying to work on Blackbird while recovering from this. And then we find out I have a triple A uh, an aortic aneurysm, just like killed my father. And so we started watching that, and it got bigger, and finally my doctor said, okay, we have to fix this. And luckily it repaired perfectly, 
and but again it's setbacks and uh, then I'm I'm of course disabled from from the stroke so mm-hmm. there's a money issue so the rebuilding of Blackbird has taken me a while but I'm not giving up <laughs> you know Good this, for you. I'm going to go down Route 66 in Blackbird and and we're going to find the paranormal and I'm going to share it with everyone social media wise and uh, that sort of thing. I did want to tell your listeners, too, if they go to ParanormalHighway.com, it is down right now for rebuilding. Um, That is going to be my main place of contact with the outside world as I travel. So I want it right. So it's being being rebuilt to kind of the cutting edge of technology there. So it should be back up soon. uh, That's kind of Blackbird. It's my home way from. (laughs) Um, What does your family think of your paranormal exploits? Um, they're pretty good. My kids, I have two children. Uh, one is, um, I divorced in 2003. So mm. that kind of eliminated that part. Um, my, have, I have a brother and a sister. Um, I have lost one sister. My brother and sister are very supportive of it. Um, and my kids, uh, certainly feel the same way. You know, they, they're grown, have their own mm. lives now. And so they're, but they, uh, they support me in it. And, and, uh, I think everyone pretty much is, is excited about right. it. Right. What so about, what about a lot easier? What about Mrs. Lowry? Uh, there is no Mrs. Lowry. Okay. I'm, I am single. All right. <laughs> so, oh, yep. Yep. So, so if there is, so if there's um, any, I keep talking. <laughs> so if there's any ladies out there who are interested in traveling route 66, who are also involved in the paranormal, get a hold of you, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I, I live on Facebook. Come to find me on Facebook. Yep, yep, definitely. Oh, yeah, we talk of that co-pilot seat quite uh, a bit. Oh, yeah. you do, eh? You're, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change your name from the highway, a paranormal highway man, to the paranormal, uh, uh, you know, what should we call Paranormal Romeo. I love that. I love that. Thanks, Craig. There we go. I like that. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Don't yeah, you've been you've been hearing too many things. <laughs> so, hey, yeah, listen, no. David, we've it's got to fun. take our we've got to take our final break, my friend. Please stand by. And Exo Nation, David Lowry and I will be back on the other side of this break. And as David said, his site is presently down. It's getting a major revamp, just like Blackbird is, so that when he goes down Highway 66 and across the great United States, he'll be able to report on the paranormal from a very unique place a very unique vehicle from a very unique paranormal investigator the one and only paranormal highwayman i'm rob mcconnell david and i return after this break as we wrap up this hour don't go away You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X-Zone, Sci-Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, Psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, 
as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. David Lowry is my special guest this hour, Exonation. First of all, David, I want to thank you so much for joining us for a very interesting hour, to say the least. Um, and thank earlier, you. earlier, David, we talked about Bigfoot. And have you had an experience with Bigfoot? I have, actually. Um, we, um, or at least we say, we say I have. Mm-hmm. I mentioned switching from Bigfoot very quickly yes. when I was a teenager. Um a couple of years ago, I was at a local meeting that we have of paranormal people where we all kind of get together and, and talk about things. And one of them said that a Bigfoot had been spotted at the Hobbs farm, which was right next door to where I used to hunt uh, uh, hunt and look for Bigfoot. And um, I talked to a few psychics and to a couple of psychologists, and they theorize because I tell people that I'm not afraid of any demon, any ghost, you know, haunted houses mm-hmm. by myself, whatever, you know, kind of fearless in that way. But Bigfoot scares the stuffings out of me. Why? And so um, they uh, they theorize that I may have encountered one back then, maybe face to face, and it terrified me so much that I blocked it, like most children do. Something uh, you know, most young people do when they have an experience like that. So, so it's probably going to take hypnotic re- regression or something like that to really find out why I have that deep seated fear and and why I quit so quick so quickly like that. Maybe I just got bored. Uh, that could be too. Yeah. <laughs> it could be too. <laughs> so I'd uh, like to go with a much more romantic version of, oh, of being oh, scared, you know. But oh, well, the, we'll have to see. Yeah, regression. <laughs> oh yeah, there, there we go. He's looking at the empty passenger seat beside the driver's seat, and he's thought, thinking about romance again. Jeez, Dave. <laughs> I can't get away from it, can I? Ah, jeez, no. <laughs> Um, no doubt. <laughs> so, is is the do you think that, or do the do the, do the psychologist that you spoke to uh, think that this is the same thing that happens to a person who has a an encounter with a UFO or an ET that the memory is lost of the event in order to protect the the experiencer? I certainly think so. Yeah, I think that uh, mm-hmm. I think that is a very good. Uh, uh, very good hypothesis there that, you know, that uh, uh, it's certainly seeing something like that and realizing it's real is is going to affect a person. And, yeah, I would think that would be entirely possible and may be the reason why so many have trouble mm-hmm. with it, certainly. With, with all the crypto people out there these days with trail cams, high-definition cameras, uh, sound equipment, uh, you know, every conceivable form of camera, how come there has not been that all conclusive photo of Bigfoot yet? The closest thing we have to a yeah. conclusive photo is the Patterson Gimlin film. Right, right. I really think I don't my opinion is not necessarily a popular one in in the Bigfoot community, mm-hmm. but it is gaining notoriety and that's that 
Bigfoot is something we have no idea what it is. I believe it's dimensional. I, I believe this creature has some way of coming and going from someplace else. Call it a portal. Call mm-hmm. it a uh, wormhole. You know, whatever. Uh, the ability for an animal that big to go behind a tree and just disappear is just uh, you know it's a little unfathomable. But but and wait there a sec. Wait. Something else going on. But mm-hmm. but how do we know? the animal goes behind a tree and disappears when there's no conclusive proof that the animal has ever been seen. Yeah, that's it's been seen, definitely. There are a lot of people who have um, not maybe not conclusive, conclusive proof with cameras, uh, but there are certainly so many eyewitness testimonies. There are so many footprints. There are so many, uh, there are so many footprints that not, uh, there's not enough pranksters in the world to make them, and some no. of them are so anatomically correct you can make out bone structure and actually make out almost like a, almost like a footprint. Mm-hmm. I mean, like a, a fingerprint would have. You know, there are, there are ridges and things on the bottom of the foot, much like uh, much like a, a thumbprint or a fingerprint. And uh, some of these prints you can make out detail like that, something a prankster could never do. And um, uh, the, the, uh, for some reason, uh, be it uh, – again, we, we come up with these theories to explain mm-hmm. things. Uh, one of mine is they are very uh, – um, I don't want to say – oh, uh, telepathic. Uh, they can tell you're in the woods before you do because they're – you know their senses are are much higher, and they may have the ability to hear your thoughts, like we uh, have always theorized aliens do. You know, there uh, one of the amazing things is there is a lot of correlation between Bigfoot and UFO sightings. Uh, I have had teams out in cemeteries doing paranormal investigations. Uh, they will get rocks thrown at them from the woods, yeah, and that's something Bigfoot loves to do. And then there will be a UFO sighting, you know, in the same kind of area. So they seem to be very close together there sometimes. That's another thing we're working on, um, their, uh, their curiosity and, and uh, uh-huh. about, uh, about humans and uh, kind of sometimes gets them in trouble. But they're very, very, very smart. And uh, uh, I think that the portal thing would explain mm-hmm. why we never find kills, why we never find they're dead. You know, they take they take them and they go someplace else. So, okay, so so of, so these are two different theories that 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 are coming up here because the first one is that there is an association with UFOs and the Bigfoot, yes. and then we're saying the Bigfoot. There's a there's a possibility that Bigfoot takes its departed and goes through a porthole. So how can we have right. two different theories? Uh, which one is the most likable, likely? Well, I think um, I think they certainly... Uh, I like the, the, the portal theory. Uh, the UFO thing may just be coincidence mm-hmm. or, uh, you know, maybe overactive imaginations on right. the part of the investigators. But uh, it does seem to happen a lot. But I like the, I like the portal theory uh, more than most. Uh, there have been reports of flashes of light and things like that when these creatures are seen. And that would certainly uh, that would certainly go along with a portal theory. So, uh, but once it's still it... in in such infancy, uh, such infancy, mm-hmm. uh, the whole field, you know, these are things we're still exploring. Yeah, you know, but once again, you said the uh, the flash of light, which goes along with the porthole theory. Well, we don't know if there are portholes, and another thing we don't know is if if in fact there are portholes, there may be no light associated with it. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Certainly, uh, certainly, wormholes and that sort of thing probably aren't going to have that. But um, uh, you know, it's just um, well, we're trying to trying to keep all this data together and and look for similarities. Sure. And, uh, you know, it's like UFO people have been doing for years with sketches of the aliens. You know, we know now seem to have a general opinion of what they look like by decades of drawings of them that seem to all correlate the same. So. Uh, that's okay. It's going to take a long time for the paranormal to become a science, and uh, a long time, a lot of exploration. I certainly won't see it in my lifetime. The next person coming along, maybe not. You know, who knows? But uh, then again, you know, theory of evolution started out pretty much the same way. So everything has to start somewhere. But evolution is traceable. Yes, that's 
true. That's what makes the paranormal that much more difficult. Why do Why do you think, David, that the scientific community does not take the paranormal very seriously? Um, it's still just a little too far out there. I think mm-hmm. most of them are. They're based on facts. They're based on things they can see, things they can feel, things they can demonstrate over and over. Um, You know, things that uh, different scientists across the world can perform an experiment and come up with the same thing. But but, Uh, but but how can we say that? It's not hard enough evidence yet. How can we say Mm -hmm. that when NASA sends probes out into space to investigate? They have no idea what they're going to find, and yet they spend billions and billions and billions of dollars (laughs) into space exploration. Why wouldn't the, the government? The government really doesn't like acknowledging anything that they can't control. Um, we've seen this since, oh my goodness, you mm-hmm. know, the beginning of of the 1900s, certainly with the government controlling any information about UFOs. Um, there are just numerous documents and and conspiracy theorists that you know the government is covering up uh, UFOs because it will cause panic. They 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 don't feel that the the American public or the the world in general is ready to admit that there there's something out there. It may cause panic. It may cause uh, you know war or whatever mm-hmm. you know. And uh, um, uh, I certainly I think that's the same way with Bigfoot. I mean, you, do you think the U.S. Forestry Service would want to admit that there's a a nine foot tall uh, 700 pound primate out there that could rip you in from land but, you but know, on the other the side woods. on the other side <laughs> on the other side of the of the discussion if we put the government conspiracy aside if the u.s forestry mm-hmm. service was to unequivocally capture a live specimen of a bigfoot it would be a big feather in their cap it would actually show that the would, U.S. government uh, forestry service is actually looking to preserve, as well as to find and to and to bring these new finds to life. I, I really don't believe that there's a government conspiracy out there, because in today's technological world, anything that is hidden can be and will be exposed. David, our time has run out uh, for tonight. I want to thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure talking oh, to you. Happy, uh, Absolutely. happy yes, trails to you. It. Happy trails to you in uh, in your Blackbird, and I hope you find a young lady to accompany you on your <laughs> on your tour down Route 66. Well, thank you very much, sir. I appreciate it. You that. take care, David. <laughs> and Dexo Nation, if you'd like to find out thank more you. about David, his website is paranormalhighway.com. I'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. I am Rob McConnell. Don't go away. a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com. 
or www.xzonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV. Plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is. But you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X-Zone, Sci-Fi and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today.